hey, what's the crack? You're very welcome to film resolved. And straight away, just have a quick look at the time codes and see if there's any sections that you can jump straight to and save yourself a bit of time. If you're only just getting to know Fusion, you've probably noticed that it can be pretty difficult to keep track of nodes. But it is important that you get into the good habit of keeping them neat and organized. You should be able to glance at your nodes and have a pretty good idea of what is happening in that Fusion composition without even looking at a preview window. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my five tips that I use to take a node graph from looking like this to looking more like this. Now, if you're new here, my name is Lee Dalton. I am a professional videographer and an aspiring cinematographer. And this is a channel where you can learn a wide range of filmmaking techniques and how to pull them all together in DaVinci Resolve. And if you're finding this content helpful, please do give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. But with all of that out of the way, let's jump into it. Before we begin, it is important to note that the way this tutorial pans out, it might make it seem like these are extra steps and that will therefore add time. And that is not the case. The point is to integrate these tips into your workflow so that you keep everything neat as you work through the composition. With that out of the way, let's start with tip number one, which is renaming nodes. Now it's not always going to be necessary to rename a node in order to keep track of things, but a really good example of where this is really necessary is when importing media into the composition. As you can see, if I pull in this letter F asset, it generically names it media in one. And if I pull in the R, it generically gets named media in two. And this goes on and on and on. So you could end up with media in one through 20, and that's really hard to keep track of. So this is a situation where you'll definitely want to get into the habit of renaming them. Now you can see in the actual set of nodes, I've just renamed them F and R, it's very straightforward. But I want to show you how to rename them and some things to look out for to really cover the basis here. To rename a node, you either right click on it and come up to rename, or you can use the keyboard shortcut F2. Say for example, I go to name this node the letter F. Well, you can see that there is no spaces allowed when naming nodes. So you're going to want to get into the habit of either capitalizing or using underscores to break up the wording and make everything more legible. When possible, I recommend that you try to work from left to right. So to put that into some context, let's take a look at this example here and work through the kind of chain of events. Let's start with the letter F. So keep an eye on the left preview window. First, we start off with a media in of this letter F asset that I created. Then it plugs into a color changing node. Then it plugs into a glow node. Now we do a bunch of merges to start building up the same thing for the letter R and the two halves of the circle to eventually create the completed glowing colored version of the logo. Then this merges on top of a bunch of other nodes that create all those plus rotating symbols that we see. Then this overall merges on top of our ultimate background, which is the grid. Then the whole thing gets affected by a lens distortion effect. which is then timed with a zoom out using a transform node, which is all merged over an alpha track into our media out. You may very well have already picked up on this concept in the previous section, and there is definitely a strong overlap between the concept of working from left to right and foreground on top, background on bottom. This concept can be seen throughout this entire set of nodes, but I wanted to focus in on this particular merge and talk about it because it's probably the ultimate and main example within this set of nodes of the idea of foreground on top, background on bottom. So keeping left to right in mind as well, if we go up and backwards in our nodes to find what is plugging into the foreground, you can see that it is a combination of our recreated logo and the plus symbols acting as a foreground to this merge. 
coming down and to the left, we can see that the background behaving in this merge node is this background grid that we have created. This helps me know at a glance what is in the foreground and what is in the background and therefore what I should be seeing in front and what I should be seeing behind. Not adhering to this could cause confusion because if this merge node had the inputs the wrong way around, I might not pick up graphically that the background is supposed to be in the background and the foreground is supposed to be in the foreground. And in this case, the grid background could completely block our logo and plus symbols if the inputs were set incorrectly. So this way, at a glance, I can tell, oh, those inputs are the wrong way around. I need to check that. Or in this case, they are correct and we can just move forward. If we right click on the grid, we can come to the arrange tools to options. Now by default, these will probably be set to auto arrange only. Let's take a look at what these do one by one. To start with, let's look at the standard behavior with nothing enabled. In short, with nothing enabled, if you move and wiggle the nodes around, you can see they don't snap or align to anything in a neat and convenient way. Now let's change this to arrange tools to grid. Now, if we try to wiggle the nodes around, you can see that the nodes now automatically snap to the intersecting points of the grid. Now let's turn back off to grid and enable to connected. Now we can take one node and position this wherever we want and it doesn't have to be on an intersecting point of the grid, but connecting nodes will now snap automatically to that node's position. I personally like to leave both of these turned on. This makes it really easy to do really even and equal spacing and really helps out with my tip number two and three. Anytime that I have multiple nodes that combine together to create one final element, I like to group these in order to keep everything neat and tidy. So let's take a look at an example of this. If we drag over this set of nodes, Ultimately, these combine to create the rebuilt logo with the glowing and colored effects enabled. So this is a prime example of a set of nodes that I would group. So to do this, you just select the nodes that you want to group, right click any of those nodes, and then come up to group. And as you can see, there is a shortcut for this, which is control G, presumably command G on a Mac. Now all of those nodes are grouped into what appears to be a single node. Don't forget to rename this group. Now we can do the same for this set of nodes here, which creates the plus symbols. So again, highlight all of those nodes, right click any one of those nodes, right click and go up to group. And again, we'll rename that group. If you want to work on a node within a group, simply right click that group and come up to expand group. This will show you what is inside the group and allow you to work on those individual nodes. You can just click on that X in the top left corner of that window to close back out the group. And you can also right click and ungroup to permanently get back all of those nodes on an individual basis. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that should have been covered? Let me know in the comment section below. And while you're down there, if you have any questions, just leave them there too. My name is Lee Dalton and this is Film Resolved. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.